In this video, we're going to talk about how to combine two functions um, by either adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them, or dividing them. So there are three. So there are three principles, or four principles. So there are four principles that we need to define in the beginning. And the first one is if you want to combine two functions by adding them. So if it looks like this, f plus g of x, that's the same as saying f of x plus g of x. So if you have two functions being added, that's the same as taking those two functions separately and adding them together. If you see it look like this, f minus g of x, that's the same as saying f of x minus g of x. Same thing with multiplication. If it looks like this, f times g of x, that's the same as saying take the f function and multiply it by the g function. And lastly, if you See it like this, f over g of x. That's the same as saying take f of x and divide it by g of x. But in this case, remember your denominator cannot be zero when you have a fraction. So in this case, this will only work if g of x is not zero. And so this is how you would combine functions by either adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them, or dividing them. So let's look at some examples. For example one, we have two functions, g of x equal to 2x and h of x equal to x squared minus 4x. And we want to combine these two functions by first adding them, find g equals h of x, and then second, subtracting them, find g minus h of x. So if we want to find g plus h of x, then that's the same as saying g of x plus h of x. Well, what is g of x? g of x is 2x, so replace g of x with 2x. And what is h of x? h of x is x squared minus 4x. And so you add those two together and you combine your like terms. So your like terms here are 2x and negative 4x, which would be a negative 2x. So this would be x squared minus 2x. Notice it also asks us to find their domains. So this is g plus h of x. Now, how would I find the domain of this? This is where you have to go back to the video where we talked about finding domains. And there were three separate categories. One category was what I call one line of stuff. In that case, the domain was always all real numbers. The second category was fractions. In that case, the denominator can't be zero. So you will take the denominator, set it not equal to zero, and solve for x. And then that will tell you what x cannot be. And then the third category was even roots. Whenever you have an even root, What's underneath the root has to be positive or zero. So you will take what's underneath the root, set it greater than or equal to zero, and solve for x. So if you don't remember that, you may want to go back and watch the video about finding domains. Actually, find the domain and range. And so for this one, this would be in the category of one line of stuff. It's just one line of numbers, variables, and exponents. And in that case, your domain is all real numbers. So the domain for this function will be negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's how you will find g plus h of x in this domain. So now let's find g minus h of x. So if you want to find g minus h of x, that's the same as saying g of x minus h of x. So what is g of x? g of x is 2x. This time I'm going to put it in parentheses because I have a minus. And usually when you have a minus and you have more than one term, and the second thing, you're going to have to distribute that minus. And so h of x is x squared minus 4x. And so I have a minus in front of two terms. So I'm going to have to distribute that minus or negative. And I end up with 2x minus x squared plus 4x. And so now combine your like terms. Your like terms are 2x and 4x. 2x plus 4x is 6x. And so this ends up being negative x squared plus 6x. And so that is what you get when you subtract h from g or g minus h of x. And so if we want to find the domain of that one, the domain here of this one or this actually this function actually fits in that first category of one line of stuff. And so in that case, your domain again will be all real numbers. So the domain for this particular function will be negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's how you take two functions and combine them by adding them and subtracting them. For example two, we now have three separate functions. We have g of x is equal to 2x, h of x is equal to x squared minus 4x, 
and then k of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. And we want to find two separate things, actually four separate things, but two different parts, a and b. For part a, we want to find g times k of x in this domain. So that's two separate things we got to find for the first part. And then for the second part, we want to find k divided by h of x in this domain. So that's also two separate things we got to find for the second part. So let's start with finding g times k of x. So for part a, we want to find g times k of x. And that's the same as saying g of x times k of x. Well, what is g of x? g of x is equal to 2x. So we'll replace g of x with 2x. And k of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. So we'll replace k of x with the square root of x minus 1. And so we were combining like terms next. But in this case, we don't have any like terms. So we will just leave the function as 2x times the square root of x minus 1. That is what g times k of x is equal to. And so now, if we want to find the domain of this function, we have to figure out which one of those categories does it fit into one line of stuff, fractions, or even roots. And in this case, this is an even root. So what's underneath the square root has to be either 0 or positive. So I want to take what's underneath the square root and set it greater than or equal to 0 and solve for x. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and I get x is greater than or equal to 1. So your domain for this function will be everything from 1 to infinity. Because there's a line underneath, you'll put a bracket around the 1. So that just says you can only plug in numbers that are 1 or bigger. Alrighty, so for part B, we want to find k divided by h of x. That's the same as saying k of x over h of x. Well, what is k of x? k of x is the square root of x minus 1. And what is h of x? h of x is x squared minus 4x. Next, we would combine any like terms, but in this case, we don't have any like terms. So this would be your final answer. k of divided by h of x is the square root of x minus 1 over x squared minus 4x. Now, we also want to find the domain. Now, we have to figure out which category does this function fit into. Is it one line of stuff, fractions, or roots, even roots? And actually, this fits into two separate categories because you, e you have an even root here, and you also have a fraction. When you have a fraction, first of all, the denominator cannot be 0. So we're going to take that denominator, set it not equal to 0. We're going to solve for x. You actually get a quadratic equation. And this one, you can actually solve it by factoring. So factor out of x, you're left with an x minus 4. Treat this not equal to sign as an equal sign. So then you would take each of those and set them not equal to 0. And so you would get, if you add 4 to both sides here, you would get, oops, set them both not equal to 0. So you would get x cannot be 0 and x cannot be 4. So those are your first two restrictions. Well, from the square root, the even root, what's underneath the radical has to be either 0 or positive. So you will take that and set it greater than or equal to 0. Or, yes, and then solve for x. So add 1 to both sides and you get x has to be greater than or equal to 1. So if I was to look at this on a number line, if this is 1, x has to be everything either greater than or equal to 1. So everything shaded this way. But then here, from the denominator, we also said that x cannot be 0 and x cannot be 4. So 0 is not included in this shaded region, so that's not an issue to us. But 4 actually is, so 4 would be right here. So what that means is we would need to take 4 out of that shaded region. And so what that would leave us with for our domain would be everything from 1 to 4 union, everything from 4 to infinity. And so your domain would be, again, I'll write it up here in case you can't see it. Everything from 1 to 4 union, everything from 4 to infinity. It says everything that's bigger than 1, greater than or equal to 1, except 4. You got to take the 4 out. And so this would be your domain for part B. And that is how you combine two functions by multiplying and dividing the functions. For example three, we also have three functions, m of x equal four times x, 
n of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3, and p of x is equal to 1 over x plus 1. We want to find three things. We want to find what is m minus n of negative 2, what is m times p of 1, and what is p divided by n of 3. So this is a, b, and c, three separate parts. What's different from this example than the last one is that we're actually combining two functions at a specific number. In the last problem, we were combining two functions and keeping x in there, so we was actually finding the exact function. And so when you want to combine two functions at a specific number, then your final result should also be a number, okay? So let's look at part A. We want to figure out what is m minus n of negative 2. Well, remember, we can break that apart. That's the same as saying m a negative 2 because before it was an x. Well, instead of having x, we got a number. So what is m a negative 2 minus n a negative 2? <clears throat> so we need to figure out what is m a negative 2 and what is m and n a negative 2? m a negative 2 means in your m a negative 2 means that in your m function, wherever there was an x, you now replace it with a negative 2. So it was 4 times x, so now it will be 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. What about n of negative 2? Same thing. In your n function, wherever there was an x, replace it with the negative 2. So it was the absolute value of x minus 3, so now it will be the absolute value of ne negative 2 minus 3, which is the absolute value of negative 5, which is equal to 5. So in this part, replace m of negative 2 with negative 8, replace n of negative 2 with 5, you get a negative 8 minus 5, which is equal to negative 13. And so m minus n and negative 2 in this case will be equal to negative 13. And let's check out part B. For part B, we want to know what is m times p of 1. So remember, you can break that up. That means what is m of 1 times p of 1? So then we will need to figure out what is m of 1 and what is p of 1. So m of 1 means in your m function, wherever there was once an x, replace it with the 1. So that's 4 times 1, which is 4. Now let's find p of 1. p of 1 is in your p function, wherever there was an x, replace it with the 1. So that would be 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. So now here, replace m of 1 with 4, and replace p of 1 with 1 half. 4 times 1 half is 2. So your final answer for part B will be 2. Alrighty. So now let's look at now let's look at part C. Part C we want to know what is P divided by N of 3? That's the same as saying P of 3 over N of 3. So what is P of 3? P of 3 means in your p function, wherever there was once an x, replace it with a 3. So 1 over 3 plus 1, which is equal to 1 fourth. And what is n of 3? n of 3 is going to be equal to the absolute value of 3 minus 3, which is equal to 0, because that's the absolute value of 0, which is 0. So in your p of 3 divided by n of 3, replace p of 3 with 1 fourth replace n of 3 with 0 and what ends up happening here is that you got 0 in the denominator which makes this undefined because remember you cannot have 0 in the denominator and so this is how you would combine multiple functions at a specific point so whenever you combine at a specific point you should get a number as an answer unless you end up with something with 0 in the denominator which will make it undefined so, if you have any questions whatsoever about combining functions, if you're confused about anything, make sure you include those questions in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. So, thank you for watching.